In this part, we're going to animate the photos, our last two photos, but this time we're going to animate the masks instead of animating the photos themselves. So the photos will stay where they are. Now, one of the things that um, we have done in previous animations is make a new layer for the anims themselves. Well, these photos were already on their own layer, but it's not a bad idea for us to make it consistent. So let's call this anims and put this layer at the very top. That way it's consistent with the other ones. Now I need to click off of the um, different objects here and click on the third one because this is the one that we're going to make our new movie clip for for our next animation. So we'll right click, choose convert to symbol, and this will be the zoom mask. And actually, now that I think about it, it should be called zoom mask anim. That way we know that it's an animated movie clip. So now we can double click on that to go inside of the movie clip and you'll see that we have our original photo there. So we're going to create a new layer and the new layer is going to be for the mask. So we can create a new mask and I'm going to create a circle like before, something similar. And we can double click on it and move it down where we want. We can even remove the um, stroke, it doesn't really need a stroke. The only thing it really needs is the fill, because that's all it uses for mask, is what is physically there. Now, we can do shape tweens, we can do motion tweens, we can do all sorts of different tweens with this mask. I might use a shape tween, that way I don't have to make a new layer um, or a new movie clip, and it'll work just fine for the mask. In order to get started, though, we need to extend our timeline out to 30 frames. So for both layers, we'll right-click and choose Insert Frame. And then the only thing that's going to animate is going to be our mask. So this is one of those things that um, I do want to point out while I'm doing it as well. A lot of times when we want to do an animation, we'll be animating basically from the end back to the beginning instead of beginning to end. Because I know with the first keyframe, I want it to actually be um, kind of a very small little dot and then zoom up. But I don't want to scale it yet. I want to wait and do that afterwards. So I'm going to right click at frame 30 for the layer 2 and insert a keyframe. And then what I could do, of course, is right click and choose mask. That way you will see that it is a mask. Right now, we don't have any sort of animation yet. So we need to unlock that layer 2. And we could call it mask if you wanted. And anyway, select the first frame, and I'm going to go to the transform panel and change this to maybe 1% and 1%. That way I can see it just a little bit. And then we'll right click and choose Create Shape Tween. Now you'll see that that mask is coming up. And I'm going to actually invert this just a little bit, um, or invert the, uh, what would you call it, the animation easing. So last time I used easing of 100%. That made it kind of slow down. We can also do, whoops, if I click back on the animation, we can do easing of negative 100. And that way it will be slow and then get faster. Well, usually we're going to want things to slow down when they get to their final um, animation or their final keyframe. So I'm going to use the ease of 100. And you can see that that mask appears. If I lock the layer, then of course you can see the results of it. So go ahead and test with Control Enter and you should see that we're now getting a mask that the mask itself is moving but the image inside it that is not. Now of course you can combine both as well. In the last animation we're going to go back to scene one and one of the things I wanted to point out about this is you might notice just a tiny little dot there. That's because we did make that still at 1% which is very, very important. If we made it at 0%, we would not be able to see that dot at all, and it'd make it fairly difficult to select this particular movie clip. That's a common problem that you find. Sometimes you have to kind of click and drag to be able to select a movie clip that has nothing in the first frame. So if we had this moved over just one frame, you don't need to do that. If I come back, oh, let's see, look at that. It shows that it's there, but I can't select anything for some reason. So, kind of interesting. It's not allowing me to select it at all, even though I see the results of the mask. 
So I'm going to go inside of it by selecting it. Oh, it's going to be hard to select. So this is actually a really good problem to find. So there's the center point. I can at least right click on that, choose edit in place or double click and take that keyframe back. So you can see it can be somewhat difficult at times to deal with animations like this where they are almost hidden at the very beginning because it kind of makes it difficult to work with. Anyway, for the last one, we're going to do our last animation using a frame by frame text animation quickly. And so we're just going to call this trees or something. We're going to spell out the word trees. So I'm going to right click and choose convert to symbol because we need it to be inside of a new um, animation. And I think I might actually call it something else. So this is going to be text anim. We can use path since this is a path that might make more sense than trees. So I'm going to to put some text on the top here, but I need to do a new layer because that will be the um, layer that we'll be using for our mask. So this will be path, I guess is what I said I'd use. And I'm going to find a nice big bold piece of text, Franklin Gothic Heavy. That's pretty big or pretty um, bold. And I'm going to change my alpha so it's a little bit less. There I can see the text and I can even make it just a little bit larger. Now we can also make our letters a little bit closer. We can even kern in between individual letters. If we could see those letters, it'd be nice. But we can use um, kerning at another time, I guess, <laughs> since we can't see them. Anyway, actually, no, we'll do it. In order to do the kerning, though, I'm going to need to change the, cut, the uh, font so I can see it. And to do kerning, you place your mouse in between two letters, and then you can press the Control, Alt, and left and right arrows together. And you'll see I can change the space in between the letters. That way I can get this to be very, very tight and look like it's a nice, bold um, series of letters. Now I can scale that up just a little bit more just to make it fit all the way across as possible. And now I can change it back to white so I can see it a little bit easier. Now what we're going to do is turn this into um, a frame-by-frame -frame animation. And so what we're going to do is actually um, break this apart and then create a keyframe at the end and then start to remove stuff as we go backwards. So I'm going to first go to the end and create a frame. The only thing that we need to animate is the mask. So I can insert a keyframe at the end there. Now I'm going to break this apart, which I should have done before, actually. I'll do both, break both apart. And now I'm going to insert another keyframe at frame 20 and another keyframe at frame 10. And what I can do for each of these is remove the letters I don't need. It should say P, A, T, H. And I just noticed that the H is going to be really, really fast. So I might insert um, a new frame at frame 40. That way I get 10 basically 10 um, frames for each letter. I'm only getting 9 for the first one, just something to point out. This really should go to 11 if I want each one to be given um, 10 frames, because it starts at 1, so instead of counting at 0, you have to count at 1, which makes it go all the way to 41 in order to have each letter have the same amount of time. So now I'll go to the first part and delete the letters I don't need. Second one, I can delete the T and the H. Third one, I can delete the H. And then the last one has the H there. So it should say P, A, T, H. Now I can make that a mask. And you'll see I get P, A, T, H. So we're able to have that animation using a frame by frame animation with text on the mask layer. So lots of different ways to use masks. If we test our movie with Control Enter, you should see the four different ways that we've been working on here, which is kind of cool.
And we're about, um, I guess, done with that tutorial. What you need to do is go ahead and code your stop and play buttons using the pre-oop method that we covered in the previous tutorial. And that will be it for this project. Thank you very much.